in these days and times, there's a lot going on where it just feels like, is anybody going to pay for the injustice? Is anybody going to get caught? Will there be any consequences for the things that are going on in the world? And it just feel it makes you feel so helpless. And so when the Lord told me that this is a time for consequences, extreme consequences, I can't tell you practically, physically, how this is going to happen or how I know this. It's more of just a Holy Spirit inside of me letting me know, like, people aren't just going to keep getting away with everything that they're doing. I'm Kaitia. And I'm Jarrell. Welcome to our podcast where we talk about glowing through life instead of just going through life. It's a his and hers perspective about modern topics and hot button issues from Christians just like you. Well, let's get into it. Ooh, we're gonna glow through it. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Glowing Through It. Today's episode is basically about how you should ask God or pray to God and ask out for help, that's what I mean, um, when you feel like you're stressed out or very um, under depression or very feeling like just not okay. You should just remember you should always pray when something even feels just a little bit wrong. Enjoy the video. Have fun. Hello and welcome to another Glowing Through It episode. I'm Kaitia Lamore and this is my husband Jarrell Connor. And today we are talking about why we should have called the police. Hmm. We went through something recently and I would love to tell you all about it. This might be a shorter episode. One, we got stuff to do. Two, my eight-year-old is babysitting my one-year-old. And three, we got stuff to do. <laughs> so yeah. So anyways, let's get right into it. We were a few weeks ago at the pool, and we're hanging out, having a good time, being a family. It was great. Fun in the sun. And then I noticed there was a rowdy group of women, and that happens sometimes on weekends. We live in an apartment complex. There's going to be parties. I think it might have been someone's birthday. We saw some banners. But anyways, these women are already being loud, and I'm like, okay, whatever. And then I look over while I'm in the pool with my daughter helping her swim and they're just like you know what we should take a topless picture and I was thinking in my head like there's no way they're going to do this in public like there's no way so they proceed to do that I guess there was a way that they were going to do that so they get in the water they go into the pool and then one of them who the whole time has her full outfit on she's the only one with actual clothes on everyone else has bikinis and she's the only one telling everybody to drop it like it's hot shake it take your clothes off and i'm just like is this the pimp anyways so she the pimp is telling these girls take your tops off let's take video let's take pictures and i look over and i'm like they're actually doing it like they're taking their bikinis off in the pool so i yell at them because i just felt rage and i felt like I'm not safe. My kids aren't safe. What is going on here? I just felt like a very fight or flight, heart pumping, like, oh my gosh, like, what do I do? So I was just like, can you guys not do that? Like, there's children here. Like, don't do that. That is not okay. That's so inappropriate. And then they look over at me and they're just like, anyways, and they just proceed to do whatever they want to do. And in that moment, I felt two things. One was absolute rage because I just felt like in danger. I felt uncomfortable. I felt like my kids were not safe. I was not safe. And then I also felt helpless. And I felt like, why is it that these women feel like they can do whatever they want to do? And like nobody else here, there's other adults, there's other people. Nobody seems to be coming to my side. Like, hey, yeah, that's not cool that you our guys are doing this in front of families. So I just felt very much like, what do I do? So I just started praying because I was like, best thing you can do is pray. And even if it's just to calm me down, because like I said, my blood is just pumping to my ears. Like I can just feel like the flames coming out. And Jarrell was in the jacuzzi with our son and he wasn't even facing that direction. So he had no idea what what was going on. And I'm just out there floating in the middle of the water with my daughter feeling like helpless. <laughs> like I don't have a phone to record this, to show anybody if I needed to call someone. So I was just like, I don't know if I did the right thing. And when we got back home, 
I was talking about some more and then I put it on my Insta stories like asking you guys basically, what would you have done? Would you have gotten in a fight? Would you have left? Would you have called security? Would you have done the same thing as me? And a lot of people said they would have called security. A lot of people said they would have left. And some people said they would have done the same thing as me. Nobody said they would fight <laughs> anybody, which is good. We ain't trying to go to jail. I got babies to raise. But I, I just couldn't stop thinking about like what happened. So the next day, as I'm mulling it over, I'm thinking like, why did I feel helpless? And why, was there something better I could have done? Because I've tried to take things into my own hands and it just didn't work. And what I felt like God was saying to me in that moment was, it's time for consequences, extreme consequences. And he was just like, not you should have yelled at them, not you should have called the security. If this happens again, call the police. What they did was actually illegal. I looked it up. It's indecent exposure. And if a woman is showing her teats, her, her nibs on her teats, and everybody can see it, that's indecent. indecent. And also, if it's um, one of the things is if they are purposely doing it and knowing that it's making you uncomfortable. Super duper illegal. And we called the leasing office because Jarrell was yeah. like, well, I want to know, like, what is even like what is even the protocol for this? So he called them and they were like, you had every right to call the police and I'm sorry that that happened to you. And I was like, finally, validation. Somebody cares. Somebody cares about me because ain't nobody else, nobody else cared. And so I felt very helpless and I realized, um, A, yes, we don't have to fight these battles all by ourselves. Our God is a big God. And B, sometimes there are actual consequences that people should have and it's not up to me it's you've escalated it ladies you've escalated it to the police not me you have escalated it to the police and there was other things they did with like singing music that had profanity at the top of their lungs and they eventually left and everything but like i said fight or flight <laughs> when you just feel like you're in a high pressure situation it's sometimes hard to know what to do. I don't find myself in these situations very often. So that was just like, my side of it was just realizing what I should do as far as handing off responsibility to the right authorities and also realizing why I felt helpless. And part of why I felt helpless, I'll tell you guys after Jarrell mentions what it means really to have pressure and how that is actually a created thing inside of you. Hello, everybody. It's me. It's your boy. So, um, yeah, I was at the pool. I didn't know all this was happening because, like she said, my back was turned and I was with the boy who I'm trying to not have him drown. Um, but, yeah, so in terms of pressure, I had a commute a few years ago where I'd be driving in to work, and I listened to sports radio often at that time especially, and there, I think it was a show with Max and Marcellus out here in LA um, on AM 570 or something. And Marcellus, I believe, was the one he was talking about because they were dealing with like, what's the pressure for this, like, high pressure situation for this athlete going through like the pressures of making the last shot or leading a team to do whatever. Um, and he was talking about how pressure is kind of. A, I don't know if you say a figment of your imagination, but it's very much a self-imposed thing for a situation because it's it doesn't exist in reality. It's it's a moment that you have that you, you're where you have to perform, where you have to do something, and you feel that there is pressure to complete this task mm -hmm. or whatever. And it's like his whole point was like, why do you feel that pressure? It's you putting your own emphasis on this mm -hmm. moment as if. It could go the other way, and it's similar to fear, where fear isn't like a tangible, real thing. Um, it's it's worry or fear is based on the belief that something will happen mm -hmm. that you have no knowledge of if it is really going to come to pass or not, and your worry or fear is not really changing yeah. it. It's just adding to the situation, the stress, and everything. So I think that's kind of the main, the crux of the point was like it's a self-imposed thing. Someone could be shooting a free throw to win the game. And if they've been there a million times and they have ice water in their veins, like they say, then they won't feel the pressure the same way someone else who's like, I've never been in this situation. Mm -hmm. And just showing up to the game, they might feel pressure or yeah. just like suiting up and being on the mm -hmm. team. So it changes so much. And it's in your head or in your heart, but not like a real 
tangible thing. Yeah, because there are some situations where you're actually in danger. If I'm being chased by a bear, that is stressful. But a Mm. lot of the things that we are stressed about are actually in our head and it's not tangible. And I wanted to also, because this same week, um, as we're talking about pressure with the athlete he was talking about, um, my friend Alita, we were talking on the phone and we were praying for each other and just talking about different things we're going through. And I was sharing her like, can you pray for me? Because like a lot of things are changing in my life and I don't want to feel overwhelmed and all this stuff. And I'm praying for her too. And she sent me a post from, his name is Brendan Burchard. I don't know this person. I can't vouch for him, but I do trust my friend's discernment with not sending me somebody who's like, gummy sand, bunch of whack stuff. So anyways, he said in this post, and then one day I decided that hurry and stress were no longer going to be a part of my life. Stress is self-created. I decided to stop manufacturing it. We can choose an internal calm and joy even amid the chaos. And I I just thought that was a very powerful statement in that time because it, it almost felt like a precursor to what I was going to be facing in real life about like, why do I feel this way? Because everybody else seems to be calm. Everybody else seems to be okay. And I'm just over here freaking out on the inside. And the reason why I felt that pressure and I felt like freaking out is because there have been several times in my life where there has been injustice done toward me or toward people I love where there was no justice where there was no solution. Um, People just got away with whatever it was that they were doing. And I feel like even in these days and times, track with me here, in these days and times, there's a lot going on where it just feels like, is anybody going to pay for the injustice? Is anybody going to get caught? Will there be any consequences for the things that are going on in the world. And it just feel it makes you feel so helpless. Um, Cause I even talk to my dad sometimes about political things and I'll just be like, Oh look, good news about this. And he's like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, they're probably going to sweep it under the rug. Like you just get so used to defeat <laughs> with certain things. And so when the Lord told me that this is a time for consequences, extreme consequences. This can be in personal life. This can be societally, but I do believe there will be a turning of the tides. So I can't tell you practically, physically how this is going to happen or how I know this. It's more of just a Holy Spirit inside of me letting me know, like people aren't just going to keep getting away Mm -hmm. with everything that they're doing. So before I kind of go into the scripture, which I have two scriptures and they're kind of long. So I want to get into that now. Before I get into that, is there anything that you want to add to Add to this. I have scriptures, but I want you to do yours because I don't know if it's going to overlap. Does that make sense? I'd rather do your, you do yours. Okay. Um, so I had a scripture, 2 Corinthians eleven twenty eight, and it talks about pressure. These are two different translations of the same thing. Apart from such external things, there is the daily pressure on me of concern for all the churches. Um, and then there's another translation which says, besides, it's the same thing, but basically they replace pressure with um, just things that come upon them daily and it's dealing with concern. So these are concerns and things that may be on your heart to deal with, but there's also a scripture that talks about anxiety and not being anxious and not worrying. Uh, Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Uh, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, pre- present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So these things aren't like not real. They're not tangible, but when you deal with stresses or worries or concerns or pressure, it's it's something you as believers you take it to God mm-hmm. and we put our trust in him mm-hmm. and you pray about it you petition God about the issue you don't like hold it in and like harbor all these mm-hmm. feelings and like I'm stressed out and I have all this it's like give it to God and that like that's what his out yeah. is it's like this is reality this is life you face things but give it to me because you're not built to carry that kind of weight kind of a thing. And I think that's important to give it to the Lord and also to ask God like, Hey, I'm carrying this burden. I'm carrying this anxiety. I'm carrying this fear. I'm carrying just this heart for, I want vindication. (laughs) I want vengeance. I'm carrying this wrath and this anger and God help me to see what it's rooted in. And like I said, for myself, it's from 
past experiences of feeling like people just get away with stuff and you just feel helpless like why even bother why even try it and it's a it's a very unfortunate feeling to to be in because you just you just feel this small like when this stuff kind of happens to you but the lord really built me up with like you don't have to figure it out you don't have to fix it but now is the time you know any time is a time to like if there's authorities you need to call you better call them you better get the help that you know you don't need to be like hey i hear this sound like i'm gonna go investigate it's like police there is a sound and i feel like somebody like come get them you know there's a time for that but i feel like now especially we're gonna see more of solutions we're gonna see more of justice we're gonna see more of vengeance is mine saith the lord basically so two scriptures i wanted to say one is Romans twelve nineteen. This is a new international version translation of that. It says, Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. And I've been hearing this actually since like 2019, when I just feel very much like I could do this, I could do that, I can make them pay, and I hope they suffer. And God is like, let me deal with that. You do your part. And let me do mine. And so I have to be like, okay, I will. Um, And then the other one, this is a longer one. It's going to be Psalm 37, but I'm going to be reading one through 24. I don't get online to share a bunch of prophetic words. That's not my thing that I don't feel that is our calling necessarily, but I do feel like there are some things that God does call me to say, and I'm a Sam, even if I look strange or stupid. So I'm just going to say, I believe this is what God is doing in this time or about to do, probably already doing and stuff we may not know about, but Psalm 37, starting at one and going through 24 It says, do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend the bow to bring down the poor and needy, to slay those whose ways are upright. But their swords will pierce their own hearts, and their bows will be broken. Better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. For the power of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The blameless spend their days under the Lord's care, and their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not wither. In days of famine, they will enjoy plenty, but the wicked will perish. Though the Lord's enemies are like the flowers of the field, they will be consumed. They will go up in smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. Those the Lord blesses will inherit the land, but those he curses will be destroyed. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. So that is a lot, but it's still not the whole Psalm 37. So if you have time, go ahead and read Psalm 37 and make sure that you are open to whatever God wants to tell you about that because it could be personal it could be global like I said societally but that is the main thing I wanted to say is like get to the root of you know why you react to things the way that you do get to the root of if you are feeling like your feelings are out of control and get to the root of if there's things that you just feel um slighted in and you're just waiting for vengeance and ready to take it into your own hands just hold on like just hold on and it's going to be okay so i will go ahead and pray if you don't so lord i come into agreement with those who are already praying i know that there are so many 
prayer warriors out there interceding for the good to finally happen, for good things to just cover the earth as the bad has covered the earth. I feel like there's a lot of revival and a lot of changes that will be happening in the body of Christ as you pour out your glory on this land. So I just continue to pray for your will to be done and for justice to be served. I pray that we will see vindication like the noonday sun in a way that we cannot hide, that we cannot deny. And I thank you, Lord, so much for what you're doing. Help us not to give up. Help us not to grow weary. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys, um, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for your prayers. If you want to support us in this podcast, you can do that in a few ways. One is to pray for us. We always appreciate that. Another way is to go to our websites. I told you in my last video that I have just launched four new designs. We have it on shirts. We have it on hats. We have it on bags. We have it on mugs. So go ahead and get you some if you want part of those proceeds to go to help us to keep these videos coming. And the last way, I guess, lamorinchrist.com, how you get mine, theredr.com, how you will get his. And if you want to donate, it's paypal.me slash Lamore. if you want to send a secure donation to us. So thank you again, and we will see you in our next video. Bye. Bye. Thank you, oh my gosh, so, so much for watching this video. You know what? One more thing you can do is like, oh, and subscribe oh and hit that notification bell we hope you have a blessed night or just have a great entire life so we hope you have a great day great entire life and bye bye we love you yeah.